Thanks, everybody. So I thought, um, you know, like many other companies, we really share this dream that the tools that we make um, uh, based on years and years of work and research that we've done in our companies we can share, but I thought I would share two stories with you today. And the first story is a project um, that really inspires us by looking at nature. Um, so I think there's a lot of focus on technology and we need to continue to look out in the world and really think about uh, what can we learn from the world around us. Kind of beautiful. Um, so one of the first books that I reread was Darwin's um, Voyage of the Beagle and his uncertainty that he had when he went out on this journey. So life is uncertain. And we know AI is just scratching the surface. And I think as we scratch the surface, we really need to think about what's this concept of uncertainty and how can we make sure that we program uncertainty and um, infuse uncertainty right into the basis of when we think about AI. Um, so Darwin was really interested in birds. Um, he studied their beaks and how they um, evolved. And we've been really interested in birds too. Birds soaring in flight, in air, um, and other natural phenomena that we sort of take for granted um, every day. The other thing that we've been really interested in is just land and air and how small people are in this huge world. So I'm from Nebraska. Um, this isn't Nebraska, this is actually a town in Arizona, but I just love this picture because I think it reminds us of, um, of you know, our place in the world. And so there's been a lot of technology before us, and like I said, this first story is sort of inspired by technology that was invented a while ago for planes that fly without engines um, just in hot air. So they look for thermal drift, and they can fly autonomously by finding um, thermal drift. And just like a bird, um, they fly through the air. And we thought this is a really beautiful concept. It's, um, it's unpredictable, it's a challenge, and maybe unlike taking on a challenge of having a computer simulate a game made of rules that was made by a person, maybe we could look at some natural challenges and see if we could really have a sailplane fly autonomously, um, modeling some of what um, birds and other animals do in the air um, that's just creating heat by the way the sun um, and land is formed. Um, so we wanted to, to really say, like, you know, what are the boundaries of software in the real world? And what can we look at other, other than just playing um, games, again, that humans derived through a set of rules? Um, so it's kind of a crazy challenge, but I think, you know, I can talk to you about a lot of the tools we have, but I thought I would just... Um, focus a little bit on, on, on some of the inspiring challenges. So we tried to make an RC, a remote control sailplane, fly autonomously to two points. Um, the goal, eventual goal would be that it can fly thousands of miles apart nonstop using the power of AI. Um, and so what, what does that require? Um, it requires that you can sense and predict and plan a route. And then, of course, you know, mechanics, things like power management, um, computational resource, managing those, and then you know, just really um, reducing uncertainty as you design the system. It also requires that you do things like go out to the desert and wear sun hats and things like that. Um, so just, just so you can get a little background of what sailplanes do, they, they actually just ride um, natural sources of lift. So depending on the ground, if you're like a plowed field or the desert or a marsh or a town, you're going to create a different kind of lift. And the sailplane either flies or sinks based on um, naturally occurring heat that happens in the air, which is also affected by wind um, and the kind of cloud coverage that you have above it. Um, and so we thought, could we get a plane to find these thermal drifts and plan a route to fly between them. So this is a picture in Seattle, in Washington State, not in Arizona, but it just kind of shows you the computer vision um, behind um, what the plane is thinking about. Um, and, just, and it visualizes the thermal drift that you can't actually see with your own eyes. So we built a plane. Um, 
this is an edge device, so it's in the air, and it needs, again, to create an adaptive route um, and control computation. And this all needs to be done on board um, using very low power. And the batteries, um, the flights can last for a long time, so we wanted the batteries to be able to be recharged in air um, and really rely on the AI to plan its flight. Um, on the glider, um, we have um, some um, tubes and tele te telemetry antenna. We have a GPS and some solar panels. Um, and then inside the glider, we leverage um, standard technology like servos, um, as well as long-range radar, um, flight controllers, a CPU, um, a very big battery, things like that. Um, and we um, base this on a Markov decision process. So basically, in the brain of, of the sailplane, it's trying to determine um, Am I in a thermal lift? Um, what's, what's the probability that I should go from this state to another state? Um, and what route should I plan um, to determine where it goes? Um, and then it flies the plane and eventually co communicates back to the researchers on the ground. Um, so the other thing that we've done is we've um, wanted to make all the tools that we make available. So if you want to just try this out, this is really um, more of our bleeding edge research than, you know, product, but we always try to share this out. So this is a project out on GitHub that's really built as a um, plug-in to the Unreal Engine. Um, and so if you want to try some of these out, you could go ahead and try them out. You know, so what did we learn? I think one of the things that we learned is like, oh my god, this plane, we thought we had the biggest region ever. We had a, like an eight by three mile area that we secured out in the desert. And we found that this plane basically went from one corner all the way to the other corner in 20 minutes. And we were really gearing for a five hour flight. So we were like, wow, wind and air, um, it can work. It can fly and plan a route, but, um, but it did it really fast. So that was sort of unexpected. And as a result, um, we were basically chasing and looking for this plane all the time, um, which was kind of funny. And we really wish that we could have better communication, because rather than like looking at your laptop and trying to figure out where it was, it would be really cool if we could just said, like, come back here, or, whoa, where are you going? You know? But um, I just want you to put your place in the mind of you know, AI researchers where we're having fun and um, getting inspired and taking risks. And hopefully all of you are doing the same thing. And hopefully all of you can take a lot of the tools and technologies that we've done um, and, and, you know, and really push the scenarios. So anyway, I just love these pictures because I think um, AI hopefully will make us um, you know, free and do kind of things that are really unexpected. So one of the other unexpected things that our Markov decision process did not predict was that there's this magnetic dust in the air, and um, it ruined some of our components. And so we never could have predicted that um, the air would have qualities that we couldn't, didn't know about, and that um, trying things out in the real world basically sometimes has unexpected consequences. Um, so anyway, check it out. This is a really fun project. Um, there is a lot of um, research behind it. Um, the other story that I've been thinking about a lot that relates a little bit to hot air is language. And so another really unpredicted um, type of artificial intelligence that really is based on nature in the real world is language. And again, I've been going back and reading a lot of the literature. If you haven't read um, Pinker, you really should look at his books like Language Instinct and How the Mind Works. And he also um, cites Darwin and talks about how language was not an invented rule-based phenomena, it just sort of evolved in very unpredictable ways. Um, so as you look at AI, I would say um, really think about uncertainty and how this is a feature, and then how, in addition to unpredictable systems, you can really combine them with very rule-based systems. So we have a set of cognitive services and tools that you can take and really easily combine and create your own applications. Um, the language tools, speech, vision, knowledge, and search, a lot of these are just components that we reuse for things like the sailplane and then add to it um, more advanced um, 
more domain-specific um, applications. And then on top of that, um, we have a lot of communication tools. So we have things like um, IoT and bots that let you create language patterns to connect a lot of these systems together. Um, and then we have a whole platform of tools. So I've just shown you a few things um, that the sail plane actually leverages, the bot framework, the cognitive services, the Azure IoT Edge tools, um, as well as the open source tools that I showed you. So as you start thinking about um, building AI, one of the things that I would really recommend is think about um, most companies have really made these tools available um, for a range of developers. And I think um, it's really cool to think how you can mix and match and try different solutions. Um, so that's kind of it, my story of nat nature. And I just want to remind us that as we talk today about lots of technologies, um, the uncertainty and unpredictability of humans and artificial intelligence is just something that we should continue to be inspired by. So thanks a lot. <laughs>